Continuing on from last week, I'm playing with some worms and some banana fungi. My mission on this earth is to connect you to the magic of nature, to thrive physically <laughs> and globally, to bring the principles of the rainforest into your everyday life. Join me on this journey as I interview change makers around the world and experiment with permaculture, centropic agroforestry and so much more. Hi, my name's Helly Weatherburn and welcome to Thriving with Nature. Click subscribe to join the adventures each week. I'm going to try and dig out the smaller one of those. Now, it's small, it's like an, uh, an iceberg, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's going to be, could be quite big underneath. So yeah, we'll just see. There's a smaller one there. See what I can do. I mean, they all clump together. It's like grass. I mean, it is a herb. Banana is a herb. So I'm just going to attempt. I like to try these things. I'm At the moment, I'm experimenting. I'm experimenting with coffee at the moment, you know, watching what they do and I'm drying some coffee and then I'm, I'll clean it up. I don't drink coffee, but I'm going to try it. Um, part of it is just learning and trying and making mistakes and seeing, okay, you know, learning that coffee is really hard wood because trying to chop it down compared to cacao was much softer wood. It's very interesting. Anyway, let's see how we go. Who's that? Who's little guy? Indonesian, this is called a chaching, it's a worm, and I found that in Balinese it's called gelati. Now, if you're watching and you speak Balinese, please tell me if I pronounce that correctly. Gelati. But the worms here are amazing. This, this guy moves like a snake. Oh, now he's moving like a worm. Look at that. Can you see its face? Isn't that amazing? Anyway, getting away from the chunku. I hate to say sorry to a worm in Indonesian. It's ma'af chaching. To say sorry to a worm in Balinese, it's ampura gelati. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna help him go somewhere where the gardens will be. He's literally like a snake. Oh, don't throw him this way. <laughs> All right, we'll get him. I'm just sitting here next to where I just dug up those worms, uh, and I don't want to keep digging because it just makes me think that there's a lot of air. The good news is, like, I don't know if you can see. Um, let me see. This soil is amazing. I need a cameraman. Anyone want to come and live with me? Be my camera person. <laughs> um, this soil is just—it's—it's it's really, it's really amazing. And it's because these worms are consuming it and, and breaking it up a bit, and it makes the roots go through really easy. This this soil is more clay. It's definitely more clay soil, and if you have animals and stuff. Um, over at the Eco Lodge, they, they're a bit jealous because they said their land has been, you know, had years and years of cows walking all over it that compacted it in a small space. Whereas this has been really great. This has been mostly forest. Um, so it's really good, but it's really amazing. There's so many worms and just using a chunkle is just, which is that big diggy thing that I'm using. Yep, the technical term is diggy thing. Uh, I think it's like a spider. A shovel had sex with an axe and made a baby. <laughs> That's what a chonkul is. Uh, yeah, so, but I'm just very grateful for this soil. And bananas, you know, it's things like this that make me sit down and think, okay, there's bananas, like this is why in Centropic Agroforestry we often get the, the banana branches. I don't know if you can see over there. See that big trunk? So a banana trunk. We cut it up into like sort of like think of it like a small log piece that you put in a fire and you you create a pathway with that and you just think how much 
insects and, and, and worms are attracted to the moisture of that breaking down. And if you put that in between your veggie gardens, it's like amazing. <coughs> so amazing, I see. So I'm just thinking actually, now this is, you're watching a live thought process happen here. I've got some banana things and I don't want them to just go to waste. I do want to compost a lot of things, but I'm just like, those banana trunks, I kind of approximately know where my uh, pathways, where my garden's going. Um, so I might just, I don't know, cut them up and go and create some pathways and just put them in for now. It may change even if I end up burying some of them. It's just amazing stuff that I don't want to, this is gold. Waste, there is no waste in nature. It's all gold. And it's just like, how can I utilize this the most to, to, to gain more energy? That's sort of the principles of permaculture. It's all about how can you store and collect and create energy with the least amount of energy. <laughs> so yeah, all right, I am gonna, this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna stop digging this up because I don't want to hurt any more worms. And I'm guessing the locals here will know the quickest and easiest way. That's how I learned how to pull out a snake fruit tree was asking, okay, how do you do it? And they showed me, I was like, wow, that's so much easier. Um, so I might wait on that. And then I might just go and do this and just put it down and create some spaces so that I can start to utilize and create some beautiful nutrition over there. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I wanted to show you, this is inside a banana. Like, think of like celery, like each cell and how it stores water. There's so much water. It's like celery inside and it's got layers. You probably saw like, that's one of the layers interesting there's a little squiggle line there's obviously something that was moving around in there but this breaks down and that the worms love it they've got their little containers it's more water and it's, oh there you go look at that look at the celery look at all the cells it's fascinating so you can imagine that lined up in your veggie garden here and here and like it's just this beautiful nutrient nutrient that's going there can make a pathway and walk on can you see that make one two three four and make a pathway like this and that will break break down and just create some an amazing and like biomass so i'm just going to do that i don't really i'm a bit ahead of because i need to measure i need to create some compost but i don't think it'll hurt because by the time i do that this could be broken down and i may as well put it over where i'm going to grow some garden so i'm going to keep doing that <laughs> It must be like National Worm Day because I'm playing in the bananas. Look at these baby ones. But look, I don't know if you can see. This is what I'm saying. See the worm there coming out? They're like inside the holes. There's, there's heaps inside there. Anyway. <gasps> Sorry for those that hate worms. <laughs> So, something I just thought of, um, which is why I stopped. I'm gonna show you something. Can you see, oh, this is a bit black and it's a bit rotten. So see how this is, that part of that's probably from there, but this has gotten a little bit rotten. Um, What there is here is a bit of a fungus in some of the bananas. I think this one. And it's funny, it smells a little bit like cow manure when it's rotting. And something that just made me think, I need to think about it is if I put some of these bananas over in near the veggie garden that have this fungus, could that fungus then just cause I think it's more for bananas, so I'm not sure it affects anything else, but it potentially could. So what's going on in my head is a couple of things. I watched a compost uh, video, No Dig, um, his name's, oh, I think it's George, he's over in England, can't remember. He's No Dig um, Gardens, he's the one that just piles compost on top, which I like. He created a compost and he said it's a bit of a myth 
You can put anything in a compost. Yeah, so as I was saying, I got a phone call just then. That's why I had to stop. The no dig guy, he said that it doesn't matter if it's got a bit of fungi and algae, over time it'll eventually die. If you're doing a long compost or even a hot compost, it can kill a lot of it. Um, you definitely have to make sure if you're doing that. The other thing is I'm thinking about is the soil food web. So I'm studying a course with Dr. Elaine Ingham. I'll put a link down below. Um, it's amazing. If you're interested in this, this, you know, understanding this gold here and how best to feed the microbes so that your gardens are awesome, I definitely recommend it. Um, so I'm on, I'm only on the first, there's many different levels of this course. I'm on the first part and then the next part is called biocomplete soil uh, bio biocomplete compost and it's all about making sure that you have all the microbes so it doesn't matter what nutrients like you can access all nutrients you have access to fungi and all that kind of stuff and so my thought is I feel that when there's a fungus there's an imbalance and if you have a balance of microbes and fungi and all that kind of thing that there's always a predator for whatever this is. So that's just one of my thoughts. I don't want to encourage it. So I'm just going to leave it here for now. And I've realized I'm, I'm enjoying myself too much. I've actually got to go. I've been floating around the garden. Um, but that's just all the things in my thoughts in my head. So I need to, I need to reach out to my Centropic Agroforestry peeps and just find out what they do. If they've, they still use the banana, if it's got a bit of a fungi in it or whether they do not put it near their garden. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in out into one of the Facebook groups that I know um, and see. What do you think I should do? Share your comment below. Stay tuned for next week where we do the final clearing for the vegetable garden and begin the compost area.